Okay, so this is the portrait we're going to glaze today. And just to recap, this is the first pass of the underpainting as I left it. And then this is the second pass. And then the third pass, I started to use a bit more black and I got the values right. And uh, this is the end of the first glaze. And it was a revelation for me because I only ended up using uh, three colours, vermilion, yellow ochre and white to uh, create the first glaze. And then with the second glaze, I just added a little bit of burnt umber and black, but really not too much. And so you should see that throughout this video. And uh, just coming up, you can just see an image of where it ended after the second glaze and it was a very valuable experience so you know i hope you enjoy it so if you'd like to see the real time videos there's five of them and they're all on patreon and so you can see them on my channel there's a link there but i hope you enjoy this anyway bearing in mind i'll, I'll blend all of these in in a bit it's just trying to feel our way through you can see loads loads of vermilion in this shadow in here That's just too light. Um, so I'm using the other brush, but just making it slightly darker. Pure vermilion. Probably you know a lot of those so the depth of that would might have been achieved in a second glaze see what it looks like What we have to do is just sort of allow a few hours at this stage to really spend a long time blending all of these areas and just working into it. It always looks really strange initially as we just slap a bit of paint on and then everything starts to sort of come into focus a bit more. A bit too pink. Sort of right. where this brush is really fraying. Mm, so just in here, yeah, it's not quite as light as that.
This is pure white, this highlight on her forehead. Well, I haven't, yeah, pretty close. I'll build up to that. And around here. That's another area where you can see it sort of quite clearly. He's just very loosely brushed over it. Probably actually, yeah, to be fair, with a larger brush, it's true. Um, I'm going to invest in some larger brushes. I do quite like working with my size twos. Quite good actually because it's sort of picking off a little bit of, of the paint at the same time so therefore allowing the underpainting just to show through so slightly so adding to the slightly more translucent quality that I'm trying to get Use a thin sable brush for that, uh, but that's something I wanted to show actually. Just using another hog's hair, got some of my ochre, and I'm just going to put some medium with it. Just that, I'm just going to scumble. Trying to use the brush, just following the line of the hair. Actually, I, I am scratching around a bit, but just sort of use it to emphasise so the line, the the fibres of the hog's hair, actually work to sort of create the illusion of hair as well. Some little discovery there, you know. I mean, I'm just using this exactly the same for this cheek, and her temple is also like that. That's just a little bit lighter. I'll have to blend that in in a minute, but let's just finish this off. There are areas where there's a bit of red. So once I've done that, really, 
I could probably work into a little bit when it's uh, wet but I'll wait for it to dry and then I'll just touch that up I'll just um, do all of those very very fine hairs there you can see where you know, there's just certain where he's created oh that's lovely so it folds just here and it's just grey and then it just folds out but it can just give a little bit of life to the painting to the eyes I still have to um, work into the irises I've got fairly close to it in the underpainting and probably that's enough because she's got sort of her eyes are quite cool and dark I'm just taking a bit of the paint off my brush. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the first glaze. And uh, so you can see it there next to the second glaze and you can see the sort of improvements that I make in the second glaze. Uh, but it was definitely a really interesting experience just working with the sort of two colours and whites, just vermilion and yellow ochre and white. And the main difference with the second glaze is that I do add some burnt umber and some black to create some of the uh, some of the shadow tones and sort of deepen some of the shadows that are already there uh, that's possibly something uh, that I could have also done in the first glaze but I just decided to approach it in this way I just wanted to see um, possibly being a bit dogmatic about it if I could just do it um, using those three colors and uh, I think next time yeah I'd probably use a sort of slightly richer colors to try and achieve that and get even closer uh, but it's just all part of the learning process so uh, yeah anyway here's the second glaze uh, just working towards as you can see the final version there it might appear a little bit random but I'm just going over where I can see it might need it and if it's too much as it is there I'll be able to take it off it's not a problem I think so I've just got my other brush so I can just start to pick it off a little bit with that. That's quite cool in there. Okay, just gotta be careful. So I'm just taking a little bit of black off the brush by wiping it on just the on the board. I need to adjust this eye I know I'm going to put um, for the cornea it just needs a little bit more white it's, light, it's definitely brighter in the original and it goes up so um, you know just to really emphasize the curve of her upper lid this is something I didn't do first time round the shadow of this lid That's a great example, just there, uh, just, it's so straightforward, you know, just literally, just lightly, very, very lightly brushing on, and to my eye, that looks really close to the original, just that area there. So there are lots of places where you can see these differences two lights so I'm just adding a little bit more and then it brings out the highlights of the nose and then actually the shape of the nose here she's got sort of the, br the bridge sticking out and then there's a highlight that's the other side now I don't want it to become it's looking a little bit hmm, what's it looking like Not oily I don't want to say that I might have thought that, I have to say it, possibly it is looking a little bit, or she's just looking too flushed, so yeah, let's not get carried away.
it's all quite uh, much richer down there on her chin. But that, that works quite well actually. Uh, I mean I just got, what's that, it's just a random mix of yellow ochre and vermilion. But it seems to be doing the trick just um, over the top of the, the glazes I've originally done. Just trying to darken everything up. And then of course we're going to work into it with some lights. dark isn't it but I'll, so that I'll just have to do with a highlight just trying to um, yeah brighten that a bit so initially uh, I was just I, I haven't drawn that very well it's just a bit crude in here so I've still got the brush marks from the first time you know bear in mind I'm just trying to sort of do it fairly rapidly and uh, of course it's preferable to spend a long time, much much longer, modelling those and just checking. You know, because I just come back to haunt you otherwise. You know, so it's a false economy, maybe. It's rushing through, but anyway, hopefully it's still still helpful. So, no, I, yeah, I'm enjoying. I like this area. It's just. This brush is getting a bit too oily. Right, now there's definitely more of this, so uh, this dimple, there's definitely a sort of slight, nothing like what I've just done. Um, so I'm just leaving it there and I'm going to just tackle it in a minute. There's definitely very dark under under the lower lip and in here I've sort of got that almost right so I've got my hog's hair with practically no paint on it at all and I'm just going to go in And you can see that uh, I'll just show a still of the uh, of the final painting, or just after the second glaze. And I'll probably continue with it, but this is the last I'm going to film. I just hope that it shows the process. It's just all about the process. And for me, uh, that was just a fantastic experience learning to paint with um, yellow ochre and vermilion. Um, and uh, and then just uh, burnt umber and black, you know. That's and then raw umber for the underpainting. That's all those uh, the only colours I use for the whole thing. And so it took about uh, six hours work. So I am sort of ploughing through it a little bit. And it's probably it's much better to spend you know at least you know twice as long as that. And you can see there looking at it, you know, it's sort of it's close enough. But there are still sort of adjustments that I could make in the drawing. That's kind of never ending. There are always going to be discrepancies uh, when you make a copy, and it's it's difficult to get it exactly right. But um, overall, I was just really happy with the experience of doing it, and as a as a learning, uh, that's been really really valuable. And I can just see that actually, yeah, I can paint a portrait using this technique, and uh, I think I'll only improve. You know, as I do the next Rubens copy, um, has got we're going to be a Velasquez next. I'm doing in the middle of the Caravaggio, and uh, we've got Van Dyck on the way. So stay tuned, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, uh, please share, like anything. Uh, just uh, it'd be really, really fantastic to hear if you've got any thoughts about it. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.